Hi, I'm Heidi Harriet. Welcome to Horse Tricks. Horse Tricks is a step-by-step -step trick horse training program that will allow you to train your own horse to do some fun tricks. Well, I'm happy to have you here. Let's get started. Hi, welcome to Horse Tricks. Today we're going to be bringing you part two of the interview and training segment with my dad, John Harriet. We'll be training pushing a ball for our trick segment. All this and more coming up on Horse Tricks. A recent episode of Horse Tricks featured an interview and training segment with my father, John Harriet. We got such a great response to that episode and I personally had so much fun. We wanted to bring you the rest of that footage. In the training segment, I'm working with my dancing horse, Lady Dancer. I'm on tour throughout the year and when I get back to Florida, I always enjoy working with my father who's also my favorite coach and mentor. So right now, I hope you also enjoy part two of the interview and training segment. The one thing I found with animal training that's exciting for me is that we're actually getting inside an animal's brain. We're communicating with them. It's not only physical, it's mental. And uh, so when we start to train an animal, it isn't just that we bring them out, put them on a lunge line and go to work. We observe them in the stable. We uh, see what kind of disposition they have. We try to figure out what personalities they might have. Maybe some little quirks that we know we're going to have to get, work the animal around that and get to understand them. So each animal becomes individualistic with, the, with us and the, the wonderful thing is, is when we find out that we are communicating with them. That's so exciting. So every day is all brand new. We have to do our homework. When we practice, we, we do something and we try to remember exactly what happened the day before. So now we know the next day where we're going to have to proceed. And we should always progress more and more and more. Never let it become a status quo so that the horse just becomes uh, the animal into a, into a situation where they don't develop. We want to keep, once we get something going, we go on to something else. So those are the things that uh, are important to me. And also, I just uh, can't say how much we enjoy training animals or educating animals. There are a lot of people that can perform with animals or show horses or show them, but they're not really trainers. They're not, they, they don't take that raw animal and work with it. And that's, that, I think that's the most exciting part of it. Well, that's, go ahead, Cindy. My dad's one thing that we've always learned when we worked with him in training any animals he always has to say one more time <laughs> when we're training something. And unfortunately, sometimes that one more time ends up being about 20 or 30 minutes longer than we anticipated because we wanted to finish it up or wrap it up. So we always dread the one more, one time. more time. But it's a very important thing because we want to see that we've accomplished what we're trying to train at the end of the day. Our viewer email question of the week comes from Monica in Kentucky, who's actually helping out with this show today. She was asking about whether to stop on a particular success or know when you should progress beyond that. It's a great question and something all of us as trainers are continually assessing. I'm always talking about progress and making sure you move it to the next level. However, you do need to find the fine line between stopping on a success and just pushing forward. Within my tricks, I provide some pretty good guidelines on my website to let you know what you can expect time-wise, how long it will take to train a specific trick. But generally, when you're working with horses, you definitely want to stop the day or the training session on a good note. If the horse is having a bad day, which happens, try to get through it, find a way to stop on a good note, put the horse away, come back the next day and start fresh. As far as trying to decide when to push on or stop with a success, you have to have a little intuitive guideline on that. We definitely want to get our successes, 
If you stop on that, come back the next day and progress just a little bit further. That's a good rule of thumb. Our viewer email question of the week. You can always email me your horse-related questions to Heidi at Horsetricks.com. Well, I've mounted up on my beautiful horse, Lady Dancer, because we're going to have some fun doing a little training right now with my dancing horse. But as always, I want to remind you of the principles of training. Always go over these before you start any projects, any training, any interactions. Again, real quickly, those are safety first. <laughs> Patience, capability, consistency and clarity, repetition, reward, discipline, and that all important progress. So again, post those on your barn. They're on my website, HeidiHarriet.com. One of the important things we've all learned from my dad, and um, we do, again, this is a form of dressage, but it's called high school. And talk about the three in one when we're using a well, double now rein you bridle. Heidi's riding with uh, four reins, two in each hand. We have what we call the snaffle, and we have what we call the curb. Now, when we ride, we have our fingers and we learn to adjust our hand to the horse so that we get the horse in what we call a state of collection. Now the horse is properly collected. Once we have the horse in that collection, we don't give and we don't take. We don't jerk the horse. We never do that. The, the mouth is very sensitive. But the rider is communicating with the horse with the feeling on the mouth and with her legs and how she uses her legs. So when she is doing the riding with two reins in each hand, now in some cases you want the horse to go completely straight, but you still want to maneuver it. So we ride what we call three and one. That means she would have the curb, a snaffle, the curb and the other snaffle in a different hand and she can ride her, the horse and do a lot of these turning and everything without the horse turning its head. We see that right now. She's going to the right, but the horse's head is straight. That's what's important. A lot of times when we ride, I like to see the rider ride with all four reins in one hand. Between the fingers, we have what we call the curb, the snaffle, the snaffle, and the curb. And this is very sophisticated in, in working and riding with the horse is because you have to communicate. Now the horse is doing a very beautiful movement called the passage or a hesitation trot. And the training on this is between the walk and the trot. It takes a lot of patience between the rider and in working with the horse, and also the horse getting to understand. We don't want the horse to put its ears back because that means when it puts its ears back, it's bothered. We don't want that. We want its ears just like they are now. And you see the horse is not fighting against the bit. The horse is accepting the bit. It's, she's not giving or jerking the horse. She's not twisting or turning. That's confusing to the horse. And the more the rider becomes more in tune and one with the horse, is that her so-called uh, cues or suggestions become almost hard to see. Now she's giving the horse a little Spanish three-step. This is a very, this is what we call, <clears throat> again, she's, get, she's telling the horse with her hands and with her feet. And it gets down to the point where you can't even tell that she's doing that, but she is. She's signaling the horse and what it's supposed to do. You notice Heidi's sitting up straight. She's not leaning back. The rule of thumb for a rider is that you should be looking right between the horse's ears. You should be, you should be sitting and looking in the horse's ears. Your hands should not be Riding with your wrist pulling and pushing, your hands should be like this. So your elbow, from your elbow to your hand to the horse's bit, should be one straight line. That's all part of the elements of what we call collection. And every, 
Any high school or dressage rider, the most important thing in working and training with the horse is it has to be in a proper collection before you can do anything. Now she's doing the Spanish walk, or what we call the Spanish march. Notice a nice high elevation. She's signaling the horse with her hands and with her feet. I would say a rule of thumb in, uh, in trying to understand what that is, when Heidi's on the horse and the horse is on four legs, in order to get the horse to bring the left leg up, you get the horse a little off balance. So the horse just has no weight on this leg and what happens? It raises the leg up. And the same thing on the right side. So this is how you train, how do you train the horse to do that? That's how you do it. But it just takes time and patience and understanding. We don't, she can see, she can signal the horse to do that at any place at any time, standing still or walking. And that's the element of getting into the passage is when she's walking and she gets the horse into a trotting movement. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Now, when we come back, we're gonna be training our trick of the week, pushing a ball. Stay tuned, more horse tricks coming right up. I love traveling around the country with my horses, performing and facilitating clinics. I get to meet a lot of great people. If you're interested in hosting a clinic and you have a facility or a location, let me know. I'd be happy to discuss it with you. There's a lot of options available. We can do trick horse training, liberty training, dancing high school horse training, and or general horsemanship. So lots of options available. I'd love to come to you and facilitate a clinic. The trick we're training today is going to be pushing a ball. So for this trick, I've enlisted the help of Lily, one of my miniature horses. You've seen Lily in other episodes. She's a little cutie pie. So we always start out telling you about tools and tack. So I have Lily's halter on, I have a lead rope, I have my little dressage whip, and I have some treats in my pocket. We also have a ball. We're gonna have the horses learn to push a ball. From this, we can take it to many other objects and have some fun with this. So what we're gonna do is hold on to our lead rope pretty close up by about, about six inches from the snap so we can kind of control their head because we're gonna wanna push their head down. Now I'm actually using a yoga type ball and for the little horses it works well. You'll find out with the big horses, it's just a little small. If you go online, you can actually find some of the bigger balls and have some fun with your horses. Feel free to start with a beach ball. As long as they're not kicking it, you'll have some fun with that. Okay, so you're going to hold on to your horse, again, right up close to the snap. And I hold the lead rope and my little whip in the other hand. Now you want to hold your whip like this. We're usually holding our whip like this. You want to turn it over, hold it like that, because the cue for this is actually going to be to reach back and touch them just under their belly. And we're going to say get it, or push it, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell them to push the ball. Lily's doing all kinds of tricks here. Okay, so this is how it's gonna work. Come on up here to the ball. We're gonna walk up, stop just before the ball, ask them to put their head down and say, push it. That's exactly what we're looking for. Come on up here, Lily. Again, we've got our little whip right here. So if I need to, I could tap her under the belly as I say it, push it. Good girl. That's exactly what we're looking for. Let's come back this way, Lily. Good, push it. Good, ho. And let's push it again. Now she gets too close to it. What happens is she gets past the ball. So we wanna keep her stopping just before the ball. Okay, so if we stop them right about here and ask them to push it, then they get a nice push on it. If we get them too close to the ball, it's hard for them to get their head down like here and push it. So you wanna stop them just before the ball and ask them to push it. Good, just like that. You can see Lily's actually having a lot of fun. You might find out that your horses really enjoy doing this. Let's do a couple more. Come on over here, Lily. Go ahead and push that ball for us. I'm gonna to try to let her do it. Push it. 
just like that. Excellent. Now I'm allowing her to do it more on her own. Good, just like that. Now she has a lot of fun with that. She's only been doing this for about a week or so. Now when we come back, we're going to bring Lucky Star and Lady Dancer in and show you how we train this. Lucky Star is just learning to do it. So we'll be right back and have some more fun pushing objects. All right, so we're having fun pushing the ball in our training segment. And I have some helpers here today. I have Cassidy with Lucky Star and my friend Monica Lynch with Lily. All right, so you saw Lily push the bar, the ball. Now I'm gonna show you Lady Dancer pushing the ball. Okay, so Lady just learned how to do this a couple weeks ago. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Come on up here, Lady. They actually have a really enjoyed learning this, all of my horses, so I've actually had them all doing it because we're having a lot of fun with it. And let's have another big push, lady. Good, and whoops, there, just like that. Okay, now Lucky Star, come on up. And let's see Lucky Star learn to push the ball. Cassidy's gonna bring Lucky Star over. He's a ball of fire today. All right. Now Lucky Star is just learning, but he's one of the smartest horses I have, so I have high hopes for him, just like that. Good. Here, I'm gonna push it here for you. Good. Good. And what we're saying, as we put the horse head down, we're asking them to push it. We're saying push it. I'm not telling him to push the ball. I'm actually just telling him to push it, because I'm gonna tell him that for any object that we're pushing, this is gonna be our universal cue, which means take your nose and push something. So let's see if Lucky Star could do a few more. Good, excellent. A couple more, Cassidy? Okay. Now we wanna have some fun and show you what you could do with this. So Cassidy, if you'll come on over here and I'm gonna have you work with me on Lady. And Monica, we're gonna have you take Lily back there and do some more pushing. And you're gonna come over here and we're gonna show you how you can apply this in other ways. So, we're going to have Lady Dancer use the push it cue. Cassidy, you're going to come right up here for me. And we're going to show you how it works when you want to push a person. So, Lady Dancer, go ahead and push it. Push it. Good. <laughs> Just like that. We could have some fun. Good. What you could do with this then is actually transfer the cue over so that you're doing this yourself. So, now you've taught your horse to push it. Now you can actually get in front of the horse, that's where your little whip comes in, and ask your horse to push it and get them to push you forward. So that's a lot of fun. When I was a little girl, my dad did that a lot with some of the performing animals where they'd actually push him right out of the performance area. The other thing you can do this with this, and I just found this out with Lady Dancer after pushing the ball, she actually now likes to push all the gates open as we're going out when we're riding. So that's another fun thing you can do with it. So pushing the ball has a lot of applications. You can have a lot of fun with it. And then you can push a lot of other things. Your, the imagination is all you need to do a lot more with this. So have some fun pushing the ball. Always say to the horse, push it. Put their head down, point them more towards the object. Take your little whip and just tap them under the belly. You'll get to the point where you could even turn the horse loose, tell them to get it, and they'll chase a ball or an object around. You can use a stroller lawnmower, any of that stuff, they can actually put their nose right on and push forward. So have some fun training that. Post your pictures on Facebook of your horses doing some of the tricks you've learned on horse tricks and let me know how it's going. My training tip for the day is training methods. People often ask me whose training method I use to work with my horses. People are sometimes surprised when I tell them my method. There are certainly several programs available on the market with step-by-step -step instructions to create a great foundation, and most of those are wonderful. I actually created a training program with four phases of training that walk you through the basics and move you into advanced disciplines. I've been fortunate to be handed a recipe for training as a third generation horse trainer. So I've taken the best of what I've learned from my grandfather and father and combined it with my decades of experience working with horses and animals and created my training program. You do need to find what works for you. So look at the different training programs out there, find out what works for you, 
put your own program together if need be. As long as you're progressing, getting great results, not hurting the horse, and maintaining a safe environment, and it's working for you, then you've found the right training program and you can progress nicely with your horse. Our training tip for the week. On our next episode of Horse Tricks, we're gonna have some fun doing some Liberty training, progressing beyond our round pen work. You'll see Lucky Star and Lady Dancer perform their act, and then I'll give you a peek into how to get that trained. All coming up on our next episode of Horse Tricks. Well, I hope you had some fun today and learned some new things to do with your horses. As always, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your horse training journey. And remember, happiness is horses!